Hello, friends, and welcome back to the English version of the Bait Podcast. We're here with episode two at the beginning of May 2020. I'm Zayori, joined again by Dendi. Dendi, my friend, how you doing on this fine Sunday afternoon? Uh, hello, I'm doing fine. Uh, not so great results from our team, but yeah, we are working on it. We're working through it. Yeah, dare I ask uh, what's what's been going on, man? It's they've been they've been some rough series. A lot of two O's in there as well. Oh yeah, well, um, at some point uh, we realized that uh, some crucial changes should be done. So at first Renat uh, stopped playing, and we were starting to fix uh, going through that. Uh, Kingar. And then Gostik stopped playing, like, uh, so we are trying out different interactions now. And uh, we started with uh, Spartan and Skywork so far. And uh, the thing about it is like, we don't have time to even, you know, like find a way, understand the other better, like see how it goes, like to try out some strategies. We instantly need to play on the big tournaments against good, pretty good teams. So it's pretty rough, like, and uh, sometimes it clicks instantly and you can give give away like good results uh, at start sometimes you need time so i guess uh yeah we we looking how it goes like we're checking out how it goes we're seeing uh, problems so i don't know uh, what's the end result of those changes gonna be uh, who's gonna uh, what's gonna be the lineup so time will show right now we are working through it so mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah yeah what a what a tough time to launch a new org, man. Like you, we started this thing like what right before the quarantine really kicked into effect. So it's always hard to start a new esports organization, and then on top of not being able to bring anybody together, like how much do you feel like the the virus has made things more difficult to get started? Uh, it's actually yeah, it's affecting for sure. I can give you as example. If we would go to bootcamp, I think none of those changes would happen probably at all because. A lot of mental problems you can fix if you are together in one place, you can cheer up each other and, you know, like talk through many different topics. And uh, But when you're online, it's a completely different story. And uh, for, like, I can even see examples on other teams uh, that are going through uh, something similar. Like Navi had some struggles for mm -hmm. some period of time, like a week or two weeks, we were struggling. And I feel it's the same thing. And if uh, we, we would be on LAN, it would be different story. So yeah, obviously virus is affecting, but we cannot bootcamp at all. So some teams, uh, for some teams, it's okay, you know, for stable teams who are already for a long time or whatever, and sure. they're doing results. But if your game will loses and they stuck up, your uh, like uh, mental state is uh, shaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's hard to deal when you're like at home, I feel like. I bet. I mean, there's... Just being able to physically interact with people and gauge their emotions has is, is got to be big. I think I, I probably mentioned that last week. Um, I'm also curious before we jump into some patch conversation, because I really want to talk about 7.26 and all of the letters that have followed, because it feels like Dota is changing very quickly. We've had a patch like once a week for the last since <laughs> we've done the last podcast. But have you ever considered for bait playing a different position other than mid? Like, do you find it difficult to captain and I imagine call shots while also playing a more technical role like two? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it like pretty hard. Like so even the last few weeks I was, uh, but it's it's also not a simple decision. Like I, I am ready to take any position that is needed for team. But at the same time, like it's uh, if I'm switching, I need to be sure with my mid laner, like I have a full trust into this person, like mm. because it's uh, it's not like something gonna completely change if I just switch a position and then we find a person who is uh, um, not capable of uh, doing some things, for example, or have not enough experience and stuff. Like it's just gonna be the same thing. So it's just yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely. Looking into options, if I uh, by switching to other role, if it's necessary, and yeah. that's got to be tough as someone who's played mid for as many years as you have to pass the torch over. I, I can only imagine what you mean by full trust <laughs> in your mid laner. Uh, it's like uh, I'll definitely need some time to adapt. I'll definitely need uh, some time to learn, and because it's different things, but. Um, uh, I just uh, feel we have no time right now, so we need to provide results instantly. That's how I feel at least. So switching is not an easy choice. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> have, and I, it's not a problem for me. I, I love Dota overall. I, it doesn't yeah. matter for me what role I'm playing, to be honest. Like I just feel that from mid position, I can uh, have more uh, impact in uh, in the game. And, and yeah, other but maybe it's also changing. Like in the way how Dota played, maybe you can have more impact from different roles too. Like so, mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes. So, and you you've only ever played mid on competitive teams, right? I'm trying to remember, like when you played on Tigers and uh, stuff, that was always mid. Did you ever play support or anything in an official? In Dota two, no, but in Dota one, yes, I played uh, supports. Uh, I played supports in Dota one, yeah. Uh, before I was mid, I think I started to play mid actually mostly from Dota 2 and in event of Dota 1 days. Before that, I was mostly playing support, I think. Oh, that's so interesting. I, n- I never knew that. D- did you want to play mid going into Dota 2 or did it just sort of fall into place? That was the position you needed for the team? Um, I I wanted. I, was, I had... Uh, people who I was watching after and they really motivated me to play the role. Like uh, uh, Yafetz, for example, who was an amazing shadow fiend. Maybe you heard about this yeah. uh, this guy. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I was really motivated to try it out. And when I realized uh, how interesting it is for me to play this role, how many things I can do to outplay enemies and stuff, and mm-hmm. how much I can do just being dependent on myself. Like So I thought it really fits me. Even further, I feel... And I'm a team player in a way. Like mm-hmm. I, I love being a team player, so I, I'm totally fine playing the support too. It's <laughs> it's not like something, you know, something like okay, I'm I'm just mid and nothing else. It, no, I can go off lane. I can go post four. I think I can go sp- go post five. Post one, I probably don't want to play because it's. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit doesn't fit me. Like it's uh, not my thing you know yeah yeah it's uh i've always heard people say that position one is a little more one-dimensional like you really have to focus on farming mechanics you get that down and then it's just kind of rinse and repeat okay i show up to a team fight it's a very different kind of uh personality type let's say than the mid players that tend to be a little more uh, is proactive the right word like you're moving around the map you tend to be setting up plays a little bit more a like happy carry is one that's just left alone in his own world to keep hitting creeps, you know? Yeah, kind of. It's uh, default things, right? But at the same time, uh, if you look at Dota differently, there is no... Uh, it, it, you, you can think that there is no roles and you can do anything in the game, right? You can be proactive as a carry position or you can be farming as a post two or uh, switch it up or switch it up. Like if you look, for example, at AI, uh, right? They don't have roles at all. So if uh, someone is losing mid lane, when suddenly will support will come up with BKB on Christian Maiden, right? Mm-hmm. Something like this. We've seen that. I had an, a, a discussion the other day with another person about ah, that. So. Okay. <laughs> this, well, I, I've always thought that there could be a team out there where you have more fluidity across the roles. And that could give you such an advantage drafting-wise. If the other team doesn't know which player is playing which hero and you're picking some flex heroes as well, like that could be cool if it was you, you were a team notorious for always having difficult to read lanes or difficult drafts to strategize against. Yeah, I was also thinking about like uh, switching nicknames because of that, you know, so <laughs> trick people. Or when you're at bootcamp, you put uh, nicknames, uh, but uh, you change settings, but you play with like different <laughs> accounts and stuff like this. So you make a person like not to not understand what you're doing. Yeah, some sneaky strategies. Yeah, you got to. You got to keep those strats, strats secret, dude. There's all sorts of tools out there watching the pubs, scraping for data, trying to figure out who's who. There's a, there's a whole business in that. Um, okay, so let, let's talk patches a little bit. Um, 7.26, I think, came out almost exactly two weeks ago. Uh, it's 4.17 was when this patch came out. So this was right after we recorded the last podcast. We had talked a little bit about your thoughts of the current meta. We talked a lot about rubber band mechanics. And this mm-hmm. was the first one that killed streak gold by 50%, reduced just general gold bounties, buildings, creeps, neutrals by an additional 10%, and also removed spell resistance, spell amplification, and movement speed for strength, intelligence, and agility. So... A, a very short patch, but one with crazy deep implications in terms of changes to the flow of the game. Yeah, the game literally upside down. So that's what happened. <laughs> it's uh, fully upside down, like everything. Everything become different. And it's impossible to realize these things 
in fast like one week two weeks three weeks month maybe even more like you need a lot of time to understand what's going on but uh, i definitely like the way where like dot is moving i like i like it it feels it's starting to feel a bit more rewarding on what you're doing you know yes like it's uh it it looks like it's coming back to older version of Dota, you know, in a way. But at the same time, it's the new one. So yeah, like a lot of different things. It's it's really interesting to me to see things that were added almost as what now feels like an experiment, then taken away. This whole attributes giving. I mean, originally it was status resistance, and then it just turned into magic resistance and the spell amp. That was sort of a cool addition, and now it's almost like Ice Frog or Valve is saying, all right, we've added too much stuff, sort of like they did with Shrines and Outposts. There was a moment there where it was too much stuff to do, <laughs> too many other objectives aside from the normal stuff you want to be doing in Dota, and then they removed it. And on a basic level, I just appreciate Valve's willingness to try things, collect some data, and if it doesn't work, say, okay, failed experiment, we'll take it out and uh, you know, recalibrate the game another way. I, part of me feels like that's just a really good approach to, to game design, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, very smart. I think uh, it doesn't damage anything. You can see how people react and stuff like this. Like, to me, those, for example, agility, strength, and intelligence buffs, they were kind of adding a little bit more randomness in a way, but after some time, you kind of get used to it in a way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, by randomness, I mean you can't calculate how much damage you're gonna get or something like this. Because there is also spell amplify, which uh, adds up by your intelligence, and it's very hard to math in the game. Like it's impossible. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's like those kind of like small things. But now you kind of know. Okay, I'm doing that much damage, and that's not changing. You know. Like, yeah. Exactly. And that's changing by things you can already easily math. Like. Well, so. to make your point, it's hard to calculate how much damage you're doing and equally difficult to calculate the reduction that the other person has as yes. they buy bracers yes. and more strength and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. So. <laughs> and yeah. then Agility was giving movement speed, so it's just a small thing too. But then, once again, you kind of... If you're getting very deep into the game and you're playing this game uh, like professionally and you're trying to learn all those things, you kind of want to like uh, you know have a feeling... Uh, oh, okay, this hero is that much movement speed and uh, you don't even need to click him because you remember it, right? Yeah. So you play a lot of games, you know, this hero has that amount of movement speed and when you chase him down, you just look at your movement speed. Okay, I actually can catch him, for example, right? The situation yeah. like this. But suddenly this agility gives you movement speed and you already don't know or it's plus something, something. And you like, it's all very like adding randomness. Yeah. Like, a lot of things, like those changing, uh, basically make make the game new every time really new like you need to learn so much every like patch like this yeah. i feel status resistance was particularly bad for what you're describing when it was just built in it's like every stun was now a different duration it's like how do i change stuns when i don't have any yeah. 30 but 35%. we did uh, we... Sorry to interrupt you. We didn't have uh, stun bars right yeah. before. It was added also. <laughs> and I think stun bars is actually... Uh, I'm, I wasn't a fan of that. Like, it's make the game easier, more casual, obviously. Easier to combine with different people. But I think it was also part of the skill of the game where you play a lot and you kind of know the t st uh, stun timing. So you... Good players, even without stun bars, obviously, they will just, you know, chain stun, uh, everything perfectly and stuff. And that was adding up some uh, joy, you know, when you were seeing how beautiful people uh, chain mm. stuns. But now there is no need to, you don't, you don't get any joy because you know, right? <laughs> okay, this bar is over, you stun. This bar is over, you stun. It just Very counts simple. it down for you. Yeah, it makes it dummy yeah. proof. I I have mixed feelings about that stuff, too, because Dota is a competitive game, and a lot of the things that feel good about it are that it's difficult, and that's why it's so rewarding. But yeah. at the same time, we have to balance that with recognizing that not all gamers are professional, and some of them just want to have fun when they play. And you, know, you have to balance making it appealing for people that aren't full-time invested in Dota like we are. So... Uh, I don't know. I, I've I've let True. some of that stuff go. You know, I think the stun bar is a good example of a happy medium where it makes it a little easier. You know, games yeah, like Path of Exile, for example, there's there's no indicators whatsoever for anything. So for new players, it's like I just died. I don't know what killed me. There's no combat log. Was it magic damage? Was it physical damage? Uh, you know, having visual elements for stuff like that is huge for for casuals. That 
you know, if you don't know that the other hero has a stun, having a stun bar is a really good way to learn that real quick. <laughs> um, so moving right along, right after uh, 7.26, we had a pretty quick follow-up patch. That was the A. There was a good five days there where Death Ball felt even stronger. You know, the, the early, like, Lycan timings were still there. And pretty much every aura-based item got a nerf, like Vlad's, again, Basilius, again, Headdress. Uh, Spirit Vessel got a buff to try and counter the, the massive healing. It seems like everything healing-based got dialed back a little bit, either made more expensive or a longer cooldown, and now you have to deal with this pesky Spirit Vessel, which seems like the item to me on this patch. And also the numbers, right? right? So uh, all the boots uh, from percentage to special number, oh, right? Yeah. And I think it's also take away some randomness. It was the same. Uh, it it kind of looked to me the same ideology that, uh, that is done with agility, strength, and intelligence in a way, right? So it's easier for you to understand math. Like you don't need to, uh, oh, 50%, you know, like this stuff. Oh, it's just 45 plus 45. Okay. Yeah. Like very, very easy. So basically the same thing, but just make it easy to understand. And yeah, they, they definitely nerfed a lot of region items that were a little bit broken, I think, in a way. I think that's also, you know, like make the game way too casual in a way. When the, everyone have like insane region come on lane, nobody <laughs> dying, like everyone is healing. And uh, what's yeah. the point of that? Like you want to calculate your damage, calculate your mana, calculate your HP, like uh, think how you exchange your resources. You want to be smart about it. It, it should be a part of uh, like uh, mind games. Right. which make a game enjoyable once again. But when everyone is reaching, everyone is like, don't care, I don't care. And only yeah. way you kill if you commit super hard. Like, when all four lanes. supports are buying headdress, you know that item is pretty busted. As you said, it just makes it stupid. You just have all this passive regen. It's like, all right, well, what are we? what was the opportunity cost here? What was the strategy? Oh, you defaulted to the meta item, all four of you. Okay, okay, cool, yeah. got it. <laughs> Other than that, I, I think the most changes in that patch were once again towards um, balancing things. But I think after this uh, 26, there is so much upside down unbalanced that it was really hard to balance uh, in with hero tweaks. Yeah, uh, like it was almost impossible. There is too many like disbalances and stuff. Yeah, and the other big item that was changed, or I guess in my mind is a huge buff, I have Scotty. Same exact thing, no tr no change to the recipe or cost or anything, and now it reduces all regeneration, healing, and lifesteal on anyone that has the debuff by 35%. So like, if you're a Slark or somebody that wanted to buy this item anyway, and you're against anyone that does healing or has high regen, this item is incredible now. It's it does what Silver Edge basically used to do. I, I couldn't believe that they took away the additional reduction of Silver Edge, but then didn't lower the cost of it either. Like I'm I'm struggling to imagine in what scenario Silver Edge is worth investing in. Um well, yeah, they did some really good uh, item balances, I feel, because we, even when that nullifier uh you can't uh, dispel anymore like thing i mm -hmm. think it's pretty smart because buying this item was actually also like waste of gold before that i feel like because one lot of sword would uh, just uh, cancel Completely cancel it counter. easy yeah yeah and now you can't do it so it's really counters some heroes now like pugnas and necroize and stuff so i like i like uh item changes to be honest mm -hmm. yeah I overall I did too. Um, it it felt very much like Nice Frog putting down the gauntlet. Uh, this is the end of five man. We are going to go back to having some proper uh, strategic fights in the mid game. No longer can you just buy all aura items and go high ground at fifteen minutes. And that was less of an issue in pro games, but especially in lower tier pubs, it felt like games were ending. I mean, act, between ten and fifteen minutes was when games were decided, and they might drag on for another ten minutes after that, but just too quickly, you know, not enough flexibility to do anything outside of the laning phase if, if two of your lanes fail, for example. Yeah, kind of. Now everyone understood that it's a lot about lanes. So obviously there are some heroes who are really monsters on lanes and some heroes who really struggle on laning. And there are some late game heroes who are obviously not about laning, but way more about like coming back uh, into the game or coming online late. So 
that's why I say like a lot of things just super disbalanced. Uh, we, are, we are super disbalanced, and I think still kind of a lot of things are disbalanced in in this direction. So lanes become super super important, and uh, uh, if you pick something like what you usually pick before, it was 726 push, right? With, with, or 725 even. Mm -hmm. With some comeback mechanics and stuff where you can pl play Spectre and you're like you're struggling on lane, whatever, when you get one, two kills and you're in the, back into the game and you're destroying everyone. Now you can't do this anymore. So a lot of people probably didn't realize that. They needed more time to realize it. So. Yeah. So some other hero tweaks in 7.26a. Uh, but then another week later, we got 7.26b. And to me, this is when things really got interesting. Uh, big highlight, denies no longer give you any gold. So uh, rip extra gold from denies. Now you can let your supports take that over again. Uh, still denies some XP, of course. But even that has been changed from 40% to 50%. Um, but the real hallmark of the B... All talents are now about 20% weaker. I, I honestly don't think there has ever been or ever will be one line that has such a huge impact across the board. It affects every single hero. Just, you know, all those talents, generally, we reduced them by 20%. <laughs> Just like, okay, that's, that is so much data to try to digest. And I saw somebody yeah. posted on Reddit, like, a full breakdown of all the changes. And it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of info. I think most of those like changes in 726B they are towards uh, fixing that thing like that we are talking about, right? About this laying snowballish thing to uh, make the game a little bit slower in a way. Mm -hmm. Tier two towers stronger, the nice give you more XP. So if you're laning like if you have weaker laning, you still get more XP, right? You have 10% more XP. Like you don't get gold for the nice fine, so some heroes can actually like uh, will have less or uh, talents minus 20%. So basically, you're not gonna snowball like even harder with those like monster heroes. I feel like obviously other heroes also get talents minus 20%, but you know uh, to understand this better, you probably need to check all the heroes who have those um, yeah. numbers. So to understand what heroes actually getting nerfs, because I guess uh, that's what uh, people who are doing changes they probably look at it before doing so, and they have very reasons to. Yeah. So most of the changes I feel like uh, they are about that uh, to slow down the game a bit before actually touching heroes, because once again, I, as I said, I think there is insane disbalance between uh, different heroes in a way, and before. Touching every hero, you probably want to like balance the game itself. The That's how I feel at least. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. Like you, you need a, a baseline to be able to compare the heroes to one another. So if you're changing that baseline, you got to get that out of the way before you can even start, um, you know, like building from that point. And there were some talents that didn't really get changed, like ones that added, you know, plus one, for example, and you can't divide it. They just were rounded off to whatever the closest number was. But to make the case uh, further that you're saying here, they also increased the experience needed for levels 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And those are right in that sweet spot of when that early snowball used to kind of come online. So now that's delayed even further. And some of the level 10 talents are they don't even feel like breakpoints anymore. And some of the N8 games that I was casting this week, it we saw players skipping the level 10 talent until they maxed out their skills and then just needed it to get to the later talents, you know? But some additional points in that third spell might be better than your level 10 talent if it's like plus six agility or something. Yeah, it's like... of, it <laughs> often happens. It often happens on uh, different yeah. heroes. That's absolutely, absolutely right. So that's good, I, I think. Um, O overall and that brings us to now our final patch 7.26 c and this feels like the final tweaking now this was mostly a talent adjustment patch where a lot of them have switched places level 10 level 15 um and the illusionist cape got a pretty <laughs> solid nerf now the illusion dies if you unquip it unequip it uh that was a little too busted being able to toggle that in your backpack with another neutral item the illusionist yeah. cape was pretty darn good there for a while so i'm okay with that one i think it's a good yeah i think it's a good and uh royal jelly thing also a good yeah. change that you can uh, do it from global cast range 
about uh, Heroes Changes once again. It just came out like what yesterday or yes, something. This and one's very. I good. obviously have no clue what's going on for now. Like I was trying to read through and understand a little bit, but uh, from what I see, it's just uh, we're trying to nerf some heroes that looks a little bit stronger than others and buff heroes that look a little bit weaker. But uh, it's definitely like still a lot of things to change, I believe, in my opinion, at least. Okay, so who's right now, who feels uh, a little bit too strong uh, from your perspective? Who, who do you want to see oh. nerfed or tuned down? Mm, before that patch, I felt that all the spirits feel, felt too strong. Okay. After this patch, I actually don't even know, like, hard to say, hard to say for now. Some right. heroes that I felt strong were getting buffs. That's also weird. Some heroes that uh, I felt not so strong getting nerfs. That also happens. Like so. Yeah, Void Spirit was taking over in the North America games we were casting. It seemed like we had this Ember versus Void Spirit matchup in every, almost every game. Probably, probably about half of them or so. And the Void Spirit just feels so good. They nerfed his movement speed a little bit. I don't know if it'll really be enough to stop this hero from being a monster because he can play it feels like he plays every role so well as a support he has a disable in the off lane he can do a lot without a lot of items in the mid he can take over the game i i still look at that hero and go yeah i'm i'm pretty scared <laughs> yeah this is this hero is definition like uh, it, actually before those comeback system things change i think this hero was not that good because he was good early game I, actually he was good he, he got nerfed after that too but uh, yeah he's very strong early game he adds up a lot of bursts he's very strong laner but uh, later in the game he wasn't uh, providing much he wasn't flash farming and when he was fading off people would get bkbs he doesn't do much against bkbs and stuff like this but now like uh, after those changes that make uh, dota different again right like no comeback system and stuff i think this hero really become like uh, strong in a way mm -hmm. uh, also because he's flexed to different roles so he have once again strong laning he has up a lot of burst early game like um yeah i mean he's cool and when he become big <laughs> And then uh, it's hard for him to come back. But he, he has flaws because he doesn't farm fast. Yeah. Like, I feel, yeah. It's true. He's he, not he a feels flash very farmer. He's fight reliant. You know, he really yeah, excels. Yeah, he's he a big fighter, people. for sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's been great for this meta, I guess, making him look good. The other hero I wanted to ask you about is Clinks. I've heard so yeah. much talk about this hero as a potential support. We saw him again in North America. It's just the games that I happen to watch on, on this patch. Uh, we saw the clinks tusk combo mostly. We saw a couple like just solo clinks farming in the safe lane, but clinks tusk <laughs> is, I, I, dude, it just destroys people. Tag team plus searing arrows at level one, is it's just a goofy amount of damage. <laughs> it's yeah, this hero it got buff from twenty uh, bonus damage from fire arrow to thirty. It's thirty percent buff. Yeah. It's insane. What other hero can get 30% damage buff like uh, like this? That's a lot. Like plus 10 damage, level one. Level yeah. one plus 10 damage. That's so much. That's insane. Yeah. So obviously this hero become instantly viewable and people. And before that, he it also got buffs, right? Before that, uh, you we change that with level one uh, first spell. I don't remember how it called where you eat a creep, right? You oh, can eat uh, any death level, pact. yeah, death pact. You can eat any level creep with level one. So basically, you don't need to have it level two to eat uh, level five, level six creeps. You can eat it all, eat them with level one. Yeah. Same goes to catapults. Uh, you could eat catapulta with level two death pact, uh, but now you can eat it with level one. So that makes support clings very viable because nice. it can just come on lane and with those cheap uh, Syrian arrows with plus thirty damage, he can. Uh, uh, punish all the offlaners and post force just out harass them and then eat catapults and be useful and then hunt uh, couriers and then place deep vision because of invisibility and uh, it even provides some team fight later on or some at least some house if he's ultimate so this hero is uh, yeah i mean instantly become good like it's yeah. just how it is they, uh, they did dial him back a little bit. So in 7.26c, they took the he Searing Arrows down minus 5 at all levels. So now it's 25 at level 1, 35 at level 2. So uh, 
a, a big sort of a big nerf after a really big buff. So I think Clinks should still be pretty strong, probably more in the core role than support. But uh, I like watching. Yeah, we'll see. Though. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely fun hero to play. Yeah, it have cool. it has his downside as a core, like it doesn't have really lane out push. But I feel like because of uh, how this patch works, you it's maybe not such a big deal anymore compared to what it was before. Yeah, yeah. There's some part of me that feels like a uh, position one clicks pick is a gamble that you'll get an orb of destruction to drop when you get to the that tier of items. It's <laughs> yeah, because it stacks with the desolator and everything. It just gives you so much extra damage. Yeah. It's the dream. Those items uh, changing balance also in some way, sometimes. Yeah. Well, they come out earlier now, too. So that's like another threat you have to deal with. That's one thing that they buffed, so to speak, is now they come out uh, on the sevens instead of on the, the zero, zero rollover. So it's uh, another threat, something else to throw off those timings and the way Dota feels. Um, so as we get yeah. towards towards the end today, one of the other heroes, the last one that I wanted to ask you about is Invoker, because we saw him played a lot in North America. I'm curious how viable you think he is. Is it uh, Quas Wex only? Are we ever going to see an Exhort Invoker again? Where, where's Invoker land for you? Um, honestly, I think uh, Firewalker can be useful. I just think uh, that for this, you need a special draft. Like if you trying to... Uh, maybe draft is build it by itself and then in the end you see okay invoker have a good fit let's say you have some shadow demon centaur in one lane and then you have some void spirit and another guy on a second lane and then suddenly invoker is amazing because you can uh, and maybe your lane for invoker is good and you have last pick okay and you're picking your fire walker and you're destroying lane and you have sun strike to like mm -hmm. shoot everywhere and suddenly you can activate this hero but other than that i still with fire walker still have a lot of flaws compared to class X and worker so usually we're gonna see class X and worker even if that change yeah yeah um maybe on the rise though he's starting to get better and better every time I see him I feel like I like this hero a little bit more well, on class wex at least I, I don't think yeah, we saw a single firewalker it's slowly getting buffs today I played uh, fire and walker in a pub yeah uh, I lost the game but uh, it felt good <laughs> <laughs> the hero felt good yeah I was against uh Husker on lane and it felt super good Okay. All right. Still some options. That's uh, pretty cool. We interviewed the winners of the North American tournament we did, and they said that you can some games get away with like a hybrid invoker, but we didn't actually see anybody play it, and they didn't really elaborate on what hybrid looks like. I, I guess I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you switch um, like halfway from Quasvex to fire or other way around. You start with fire to okay. dominate lane, and when you switch to Quasvex, but then usually it's not working that effective. And it depends on enemy heroes, if you need this EMP high level or not, like, and if you need those disables on high level or not, because you most of disables coming from Quas. Yeah. I see. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So full of knowledge you are, Mr. Dendy. It's always a pleasure to get to sit down and talk with you, my man. That last 30 minutes just flew by in the blink of an eye. Um, yeah, it's, Dota is always fun to talk about. There is so many things, yeah, dude. right? It's so deep. We could probably sit here for another hour. Um, anything else you want to get off your chest this week? Anything exciting coming up in the world of bait we need to share with the, the fine people of YouTube and SoundCloud? Well, I definitely... Uh, I worry and I care a lot about uh, what people think and what people say in, 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 in towards our team. I understand that uh, people are a little bit uh, disappointed with results. Not a little bit. Like, I'm disappointed a lot. It's a really half depression time for me. Like uh, um, Really, really rough times. But yeah, I hope that people understand that uh, our team right now in uh, into building mod let's say like this so we definitely need some time to find the right setup um, and then we find the right approach so it will yeah it, it's not that easy but like i say we are not like sitting and doing nothing we are working every day like uh, pretty hard and, and yeah i'm just uh, trying to fix things so we'll see how it goes uh, i have no idea what's gonna happen in next week or two so I hope uh, things change for the better. Yeah, and uh, I'm really grateful to everyone who is still cheer for us and watching our games and writing to me. And uh, like it's a very 
uh, motivating and uh, adding up uh, into those set times for me, like by results. <laughs> yeah. You, you've got a lot of hardcore fans, though, that have been watching you for a really long time and they just want to see you succeed. So, you know, so, some of that uh, anger, let's call it, is just a product of people being big fans and wanting to see your team do well. So I, I have faith, man. I have faith. It's just going to take some time, like you said. And yeah. uh, I, I know your work me. ethic. So I, I, I have yeah. confidence that you'll figure out the uh, winning formula. Yeah, I also am very angry when we lose. Like it's not like every lose really hurts, really hurts. But yeah, so you you can realize how angry I am right now. Like <laughs> in it's uh, I mean uh, sport angry. Like yeah, yeah. Well, it's competitive, man. It's like the as good as the wins feel, the losses feel equal but opposite, if if not even worse. As it's like it's that letdown feeling. It's that competitive drive. It's it's tough, but. Yeah, and when wins stuck up, same as like losses, they stuck up. So wins can motivate you uh, to do great things and to do crazy things. And uh, you, you can create a lot of beautiful things when you are winning, you know, like some crazy things. And same goes to losers. Like uh, you can look very silly while on the other hand, uh, there is much more potential than that, you know. Yeah. Well, a, a new era of Dota with all these patch changes might be before us. Uh, For still, sure. Still a lot of uncertainty with the international. Uh, you know, we just saw the announcement from Valve that it's postponed, question mark. We don't really know till when or where or any, any further updates other than the original plan is not going to happen. So uh, honestly, we might look back and go, this was a good time to get some trial and error and kind of get our footing because it's just a, it's a crazy time for everybody right now. Let's face it, man. Yeah, you yeah. could be one of those teams in North America, like XJ Storm Business Associates, that had enough DPC points to maybe go to TI, and now they don't know if those points are ever going to turn into anything. You know, this could have been their big run where they make it, and that whole opportunity is just in limbo as they continue to play without an organization and try to stay motivated. It's it's tough on everyone out there. That's one thing you got to keep. I in can mind understand yourself. that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it coming from a lot of different ways. But I mean, we get what we get. So we just adapt and we try our best from every situation. For example, for us, I feel a little bit less pressure, I guess, because maybe we have more time to make things work, you know, mm -hmm. like so. Yeah. Yeah, it's like these these aren't DPC events. So, you know, in some ways these you know, these events are they're good and it's good to play in and prize money's great, but they don't matter as much as like the qualifiers for TI, for example. So this is a good maybe a better time for trial and error than during the actual DPC season. Yep. Yep. All right, man. Well, I think that takes us to a wrap. Uh, of course, we'll be back again in two weeks with episode three. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at Bait, uh, at Bait Esports and uh, myself and Dendi as well at Dendi Boss at Zyori TV. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.